It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, dig into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is Dave Hayes, who many of you know as The Praying Medic, and we're going to be discussing one of his more recent books, and that is called Dream Interpretation Made Simple. Dave, it is always an honor to speak with you, sir. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Sean. Thanks for having me back on the show. I am glad to be here. Well, and, uh, you know, I, when I pick up a book about dream interpretation, my working assumption when I get past that front flap is that you have had a lifelong journey with dreams and hearing from God in dreams, uh, but that wasn't necessarily how your story unfolded. So tell us about uh, your seasons of not dreaming and then how all of a sudden it became a big part of your life. Yep. And that's actually one of the reasons why I take dreams so seriously is, you know, I was uh, most of my adult life, I lived as an atheist. And for 25 years, I didn't have a single dream, Uh, not even a dream that I forgot. I just did not have dreams for 25 years. And then in 2008, um, I suddenly had my first dream in in 25 years. And in that dream, I met God. And it was a pretty interesting experience. If you've never done it, I highly recommend it. Uh, (laughs) We had a little little conversation. It was mostly him talking, and <laughs> although he did give me a, a quiz, uh, in this dream, he was talking to me, and he said, I, I was working as a paramedic at the time, and he said, I'm going to show you what's wrong with your patients. Uh, I want you to pray for them, and when you do, I'll heal them. And he gave me kind of an anatomy test. He showed me some uh, images that looked like CAT scans or x-rays and asked me what I saw. Uh, if you're familiar with the commissioning of Jeremiah as a prophet in uh, Jeremiah chapter one, it, my experience was similar to that, um, where God was basically showing me things and asking me what I saw. So that was uh, August 8th, 2008. Um, like I said, my first dream in 25 years, and it, it blew me away. I, I'd been a Christian for eight years. I had... Uh, not really ever seen a vision that I was aware of. I had not had a dream in 25 years. Um, I did not believe in healing and miracles, didn't believe in the supernatural at all, really. So that was kind of a a, a big uh, change in direction for me. And since then, God has given me thousands of dreams, a lot of them prophetic, uh, quite a few dreams about President Trump uh, and, and other things, um, different. Uh, he tends to, in the last five years, Focus a lot on geopolitics, but I get I've had thousands of dreams about healing, uh, both physical healing, emotional healing, where God has taught me uh, concepts related to physical healing, emotional healing, and deliverance. And this book on dream interpretation, um, it it's my my attempt at um, taking the abstract spiritual concept of dreams and dream interpretation and breaking it down into everyday language that the average person can understand. And in terms of the season for this book to come out, was there an intentionality behind that? Were your fans asking for you to write a dream interpretation? Uh, What was the reason this was the season for this book to come out? (laughs) Well, like I said, I had been focusing on uh, politics and current events for the last, gosh, five years. That's pretty much what I've been, uh, what my assignment, my temporary assignment from God was to report on politics, current events. And I'd been doing that. And then uh, after Joe Biden got into the, uh, the Oval Office, everything just kind of quieted down. There wasn't a whole lot going on politically. And then uh, I, I had st- actually started this dr- book on dreams years ago. I think I wrote my first sort of um, a, a very long article, about 5,000 words. It could have been a short ebook at the time. It was a very long article discussing um, the concept of dreams and interpretation. I wrote that back in 2010 or 2011, and I had always wanted to turn that into a full-length, a full-size book. And I finally had the time to do it because politics and everything just kind of slowed down. There wasn't a lot going on. And the Lord just kind of brought this back up again as a reminder, hey, you have this unfinished book about dreams that you probably need to finish. So um, much of last year, uh, 2021, I spent researching um, 
asking God what kinds of issues he wanted me to include in the book, what kinds of illustrations, what concepts he wanted me to cover. Um, it, I spent like you know, four months researching, probably maybe closer to six months in all, researching, developing the manuscript, and then refining it, and then you know, finally getting it published. Uh, it was just, you know, it, it's a labor of love. I love to write. And I love dreams. It's just about nothing that I enjoy discussing more than dreams. Uh, I just find dreams to be fascinating. Uh, it's a very powerful way through which God communicates uh, important ideas to us. And uh, I guess uh, one practical question, and then, then we'll get into some of the meat from the, the book. Uh, on a practical level, how have you found uh, to, and if, and any effective tools or ways to keep track of dreams? I mean, I've talked to people who they have a phone nearby when they're sleeping, so they'll put them on their iPhone. I have other people who write in journals. Uh, I think you you said in the book you have uh, sometimes upwards of up to 10 dreams a night. So how do you keep track of those? Yes, there's, there's a lot of different ways that people um, use to record their dreams. I think recording dreams is very important. Um, a lot of people say, you know, I don't remember my dreams. How do you guys remember your dreams? Like Somebody was saying that this morning in my Telegram channel. We're talking about dreams, and several people commented that they can't remember them. Well, remembering your dreams is an, is really an issue of discipline. It, it, it's a self discipline. It's it's a it's a mental discipline where you learn uh, to write down, record your dream as soon as you wake up. I mean, as soon as you wake up, before you go to the bathroom, before you get a drink of water, before you talk to anybody. It's very important to. Be still for a minute, collect the thoughts uh, or collect the, the concepts portrayed in the dream, images, things people said, colors, numbers, directions, names, things of that nature, and then get all that information down. Some people do it using a recorded you know, device on their phone, using a, like a recorder. Other people use a computer or a tablet uh, and they just type it out. I do it the old fashioned way. I have a stack of note cards by my bedstand, nightstand, a flashlight, and a pen. And I just write my dreams down uh, as soon as I wake up, whether it's one o'clock in the morning or, or 5.30. I, as soon as I wake up, or if I had a dream, I write them down. I, I dream almost every night. And what I found is, is an interesting thing. Um, as people have purchased this book, a number of people have written to me saying that when they started journaling their dreams, they started having more dreams. <laughs> Funny how that works. Um, but yeah, it, there's a number of ways you can do it, but it's very important to record your dreams. And I'll say too, you know, you don't have to feel like you must write a book every time you have a dream. I find for me, just having kind of a shorthand of kind of the kind of the milestones or high points of the dream so I can remember it later. Uh, and we all woken up and like, oh, I'm going to remember this. And then 10 minutes later, you're like, oh, I have no idea. So uh, you don't feel like you have to write a book. It can be simple, but uh, you know, I would say craft a process that just works well for what you have at hand, how your mind works, how you, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if there's a creativity element in, in writing your dreams down in your notes, but uh, you do you, whatever works well for you. That's what I would yeah. recommend. Uh, yeah. well, in, in terms of uh, just dreams, uh, give it, give us some context on you know, the origin of dreams, God purpose for dreams, maybe even contrast. <laughs> is there a difference between what the world or the enemy is going after with dreams versus what God is going after uh, with dreams in our lives? Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting subject because it's uh, controversial. So if you listen to secular psychologists and, um, and, and other people who weigh in on the origin and meaning of dreams, most of them fall into the camp of um, that dreams don't have uh, a real meaning. Uh, or, an, or an important meaning. Um, most secular psychologists think that dreams are either hallucinations or uh, just our, our mind, our soul, um, sort of replaying issues that we're, we're thinking about during the daytime. Uh, they don't believe, they certainly don't believe that dreams are from God. And they don't believe that dreams reveal anything significant. That's, that's one camp. And then there's the other camp. Uh, you read the Bible <laughs> and believe what the Bible says all throughout the scriptures. Um, people were given dreams from God. Actually, Daniel, the prophet, and Joseph 
um, the patriarch. Both of them were skilled in dream interpretation as a gift from God. And both of them said dreams come from God and the interpretations come from God. Um, Daniel was raised up to a very prominent uh, place of authority in the Babylonian kingdom because of his ability to interpret dreams. Same thing for Joseph. He went from the prison cell to the house of Pharaoh and one of the highest people in, the, in Egypt because he interpreted Pharaoh's dreams. Um, you know, Jacob had a lot of dreams. Uh, the, the birth of Jesus was told to Joseph in a dream uh, where the angel came to him in a dream and said, hey, you're thinking about putting away Mary. Don't do that. Uh, she's pregnant, yes, but she wasn't cheating on you. <laughs> she, she divinely conceived baby, and there's a plan, so just uh, go with the plan. Um, there was a lot of, um, if you look through the scriptures, a lot of important key events that were foretold in dreams. When uh, Herod planned to kill all the children because he knew that the Messiah had been born, well, when Jesus was two years old, an angel came in a dream and told Joseph, hey, go to Egypt. Get out of town because Herod's coming for your child. And then an angel came again in a dream and told him to go back to Israel when it was safe. So, like I said, a lot of key events have been uh, foretold and, and foreshadowed in dreams. Um, I believe dreams are from God. And not all dreams. I think there are soul dreams. I've had dreams from the enemy, demonic dreams. Um, so dreams come from different sources. And it's important to learn how to discern what dreams are from your soul what dreams are from the enemy and what dreams are from God. And in terms of basic kind of basics of dream interpretation, uh, some certain level of discernment at like a starting level, we have a dream, we write it down in our journal, we capture it on our phone. What do we do with it? How do we process that? Yep. Yeah, I have a um, kind of a, a, a method that I use for dream interpretation. Uh, and I'll just give you a brief summary of it. So like you noted earlier, it's not, um, necessary to write out every detail, every word, every place you went, every, you know, the color of every car and the color of every coat and pair of pants that a person was wearing in a dream. Uh, it's, it's not necessary to capture every detail. Now, my wife is a very detailed journaler. She, she'll write down her dream and she'll take two or three pages in, in her journal. Me, I usually summarize dreams. Uh, summary. Kind of an overview, unless there's something that uh, there's a lot of details um, that I think are relevant. So it's, it's important to capture things like names of people that are mentioned in a dream. Sometimes if you simply write down the name of a person along with, you know, the action and what's going on, you go to a dream interpretation uh, guide and look up the name, the meaning of the name. Sometimes the meaning of the name is the interpretation. That's the message. Uh, sometimes if you just interpret the person's name that should talk to you in a dream, uh, it's a message from God. Here's an example. You have a dream where someone named David is talking to you and they just seem to be talking, nothing significant, nothing highly relevant, short dream. Someone named David is talking to you. You know, their name is David and that's the end of the dream. So you go look up the name David and it means beloved. <laughs> it could be that God is simply telling you, you are my beloved. And I want to have a conversation with you about anything you want to talk about, right? Sometimes the meaning of a dream is very simple. Sometimes it's a little bit more complex, but so write down the name of names of people in dreams, names of places, prominent colors. If you're, if you're driving a car, um, cars are highly relevant in dreams. Houses are relevant in dreams. Um, houses generally represent our life. House or cars. There's a lot, a lot of different ways to look at how a car represents things in dreams, but generally um, a car represents some aspect of your ministry and not just cars, but all vehicles. So airplanes, boats, any vehicle, bicycle, motorcycle that you are in, in a dream that you're um, the driver of or a passenger in, is usually related to your personal ministry to other people and aspects of it. Right, so you need to capture those ideas. If you're in a house, what is the condition of the house? If you're driving a car. How is the car behaving? Are you driving it? Is there an invisible person next to you who's driving it? Holy Spirit. Um, if you're piloting a boat or a plane, how big is it? Where are the passengers? Where is it going? 
the, you know, how, how fast is it going? Those are all relevant things. And if you look those issues up in a, in a dream book, you'll find that they reveal um, messages from God, compass points, directions, colors, all of those issues have significance in dreams. And it's good to note them. If you're driving a car of a certain color, if you meet a person who's wearing a certain color of uh, outstanding, something's highlighted, color of a robe, color of, a, of a, their clothing could be a, a significant message. So uh, again, just a short overview of some of the things that are important to note when you're writing down a dream and, and uh, what they might mean. Next, I'd love to have you talk to us a little about uh, some of the different types of dreams. And this could be some of the different types of dreams you experience or when people reach out to you for help and feedback, what are the types of dreams people are maybe coming to you most often for help discerning and understanding those? Yeah, so I break dreams down into a couple of different uh, categories. And um, first category is the type of dreams people have. And the second category is the themes that recur through dreams. So when I say the type of dreams people have, I'm talking about uh, most dreams, I would say probably 90% of dreams can be categorized into one of 20 types of dreams, right? So there's a dream that you're driving a car, very common. There's a dream that you're in a bathroom doing something, whether it's going to the bathroom, washing your hands, taking a shower. Bathroom dreams are one of the most common types of dreams people have. Um, Being chased. So whether you're being chased by people, being chased by demons, being chased by dogs, one of the most common types of dream people have is being chased. Uh, falling is a very common type of dream. Uh, they're very common and they're highly significant. They convey a message if you're in a, falling in a dream. Uh, actually, funerals are one of the more common types of dreams people have. If you're at a funeral, there's a, there's a relevant message there, and it's not usually what people think it is. Pregnancy dreams are very common, but even men have pregnancy dreams. <laughs> Most pregnancy dreams are not literal. It's a symbolic message where God is trying to speak to you about a particular issue. So those are some of the uh, types of dreams that people have. And um, they almost always have kind of a universal, um, almost universal uh, interpretation. Sometimes there's nuances within the interpretation. Like if you're falling, where are you falling from and where are you falling to? If, if I had a dream that I was in, you know, as a paramedic, I was working and I was on top of my ambulance and I fell off of the ambulance onto the gurney uh, that I used to transport patients, that dream would have a particular meaning to me. Uh, it would be different than if somebody else had that dream because I work as a paramedic and they don't. And God typically uses um, a very unique personal dream language for each person. And that's another issue you can talk about it if you want to. But uh, those, so the, those are, there's different categories, different types of dreams that people can have. And like I said, a lot of dreams, they fall into a certain category. And those categories have pretty predictable uh, interpretations. Well, Dave, since you put it out there, I'm going to pull on that thread. Uh, take us a little bit in the direction of uh, things that are unique to an individual when it comes to their dreams. Yep. And this is a concept that I first learned about when I read uh, James Gall's book, Dream Language. It's a really good book. Um, I learned a lot from that book. It was my first book that I read on dream interpretation. And James Gall's book focuses sort of on the idea that God speaks to each of us individually in our own dream language. There are idioms, there are phrases, there are um, colors, places, settings that are individual to each of us. I worked as a paramedic for 35 years. I have a lot of dreams (laughs) where I'm working as a paramedic. All right. If you're a plumber, or if you are an accountant, or if you you know work a, a, as a, an auto mechanic, your dreams are going to more more often than not, they're going to use the language, the scenes, the settings of where you work. If you work in an office. You're going to have a lot of dreams where you're sort of in an office. My wife Denise worked as a graphic designer for many years. She has a lot of dreams about graphic design, user computers, colors, things of that nature. So. God can can convey a similar message to 10 different people using 10 different scenes, different images, different 
uh, symbolic references, turns of a phrase, idioms, um, actions, interactions with people. He can convey the same message to 10 different people uh, differently. And so because God tends to personalize our dreams, that the meaning of them is personal, uh, what that means is it's going to be difficult for me to interpret your dream uh, because I don't know what you do for a living. I don't know when you see your aunt, your father, and your brother in a dream in a particular setting and certain events are happening. I don't have any context for what that means to, to you. You would. You might know, well, that was my brother and he died 10 years ago. See, I don't know that. Uh, that was my aunt. She died 20 years ago. In that building, there was a fire and you know my family members were killed in a fire. I, I wouldn't know any of that. Uh, information the, the dreamer would so uh it's not that i don't uh, like to interpret people's dreams um i do i will you know people can send me a dream uh if uh, dream interpretation is from the lord <laughs> and what i do if someone gives me a dream whether it's on telegram or by email uh what i'll do is i'll ask the holy spirit okay give me some insight some revelation into this dream and sometimes i'll just ask questions of the person what does this mean to you? What does this mean to you? Who is this person? What does their relationship mean to you? If I get some kind of idea at, about what those things mean to that individual, I can then help them interpret the dream. Most of the time, I'm going to warn you, if you send me a dream to interpret, I'm going to email you back and say, what do you think it means? <laughs> because, because my job is to teach. Uh, I, I'm really not interested in interpreting 100 people's dreams every day. I want to teach people how to interpret their own dreams. And, and that comes, uh, part of that is learning to hear the voice of God. Uh, God speaks to us through dreams, speaks to us through visions. And part of the interpretation process for dreams is hearing what the Holy Spirit is telling you. I interpret my dreams um, largely based, on, like I go through a mechanical process. I see this name, I see this place, this action, this house. Okay, I'm, I'm looking for standard interpretations of those uh, symbols. And then I ask the Holy Spirit, okay, help me put all this together. What does this mean? What is your message? And then the Holy Spirit will give me a thought that wraps it all up and summarizes it and makes sense of it. And the, the most important part of dream interpretation is hearing the Holy Spirit, hearing him tell you, this is what that means. This is what this means. Here's the message. Well, I love Dave how in all of your books, you really encourage people to step into hearing from God for themselves, that you don't have to go to the author or the person on the stage, that actually God wants to communicate uh, directly with you. And so I, I just I just love that aspect of uh, your various books and materials. Uh, last time you were on the show, you talked about, or we talked about traveling in the spirit. Is there ever a connection between dreams and traveling in the spirit? Yes. <laughs> I actually think a lot of people elaborate. I shouldn't have asked a yes or no question. <laughs> I actually think a lot of people travel in the spirit in dreams and they don't know. Uh, I think people are starting to suspect that. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, I, I believe dreams are spiritual. Uh, they're spiritual experiences. I think that some dreams are spiritual messages and other dreams are spiritual experiences. We're actually experiencing something in a dream. Um, good example. Um, recently, I'm getting a lot of testimonies from people who are following my Telegram channel. And a lot of people are receiving emotional healing and physical healing in dreams. So uh, I have a friend, Mike Labs, years ago. He had really bad allergies. And he had a dream where Jesus healed him of his allergies. And in the, in the dream, he was walking through this field of wildflowers that normally would have triggered an allergic response. And he didn't have any reaction in the dream. Then when he woke up, and over the next course of the next couple of months, he realized his allergies were healed in the dream. So he had a healing experience in a dream. I know a lot of people recently have been, um, they've been going through emotional healing uh, as, as a process with the Lord. And some of that process is happening in dreams. They're being delivered of evil spirits. They're uh, they're meeting with the Lord. Um, they're being healed of emotional trauma. Some people are receiving physical healing. Um, a lot of people go places in dreams, like they'll go to someone's house. They'll go to a foreign country. 
Um, it's not uncommon for people to say, you know, I had a dream. I went to this country in Africa. I met this guy who was a missionary and I gave him a bunch of money. And that was the end of the dream. And then, you know, they find out six months later that that person actually met them in the dream, received the money. <laughs> it was a real experience and they thought they were just dreaming. So, yeah, I think, um, I think a lot of dreams are, uh, are spiritual experiences, including spiritual travel. I think um, a lot of people are probably visiting heaven, the throne of heaven, in their dreams um, or visions. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a, uh, it's a spiritual landscape. It's a real, the spiritual dimension is real. And when our soul goes to sleep, our spirit is like, hey, I'm going to go do stuff. <laughs> I'll be back in a little, little bit. So, yeah, I think traveling the spirit is uh, a bigger part of dreams than most people realize. Almost time for us to wrap up, but uh, a couple more questions. Uh, in terms of, you know, God gives us something in a, in a dream. How do we know what we should put into action? I, I kind of look at it how I look at you, you get a prophetic word from somebody. You pray about it. You wrestle with it. You chew on it. Oftentimes to see something come to pass, there is a faith element of stepping into it. Yep. Uh, so in terms of seeing dreams come to pass, things put into motion or action, how does that work with dreams? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, you know, there's a, there's a phenomenon that is sort of common among people of faith who uh, God gives them revelation, gives them a word of knowledge, gives them a prophetic word, gives them a dream or a vision. They're going to have some kind of ministry. They're going to be healed, right? Some, some God's giving them a promise. And unfortunately, a lot of people just sort of assume that God is going to sovereignly bring that to pass without our interaction, without us actually stepping out in faith and making it happen. Uh, I know a lot of people who've been disappointed because they had a dream where someone was, where God said, or an angel told them, or they were healed in a dream. And then 20 years pass and they're not healed and they, want, and they wonder why. Well, in some cases, when you have that experience, God is telling you, I want you to pursue this. I want you to go through emotional healing. I want you to go through physical healing. I want you to learn about healing. Go you know, get rid of the evil spirits. And some people don't really engage the process to appropriate the promise of God. And, and uh, dreams, same way. Um, uh, when, when God shows you something in a dream, all right, he's, uh, he's starting a conversation, all right? I have a lot of dreams where God will highlight an issue, and he'll say, all right, I want to have a discussion with you about this issue. So he'll give me a dream about it, and then I will pray about it, get the interpretation, get some clarity and understanding about what he's talking about, and then I will take an action step. If it's about social media, something he wants me to talk about on social media, I'll post about that subject on social media. A lot of the things I talk about on social media, it's because God gave me a dream about that subject. He wants me to start a conversation about that subject on social media. And then if I obey what he's given me in that first dream, he'll give me another dream that elaborates on that issue. So then I'll continue the conversation on social media. And if, if, that, if I'm walking in the right direction, he'll give me another dream elaborating a little, showing me a little bit more of what he wants to do. So I'll follow that direction and then he'll give me another dream. <laughs> it's, it's like a trail of breadcrumbs for me anyway. Um, when, when God gives us revelation, like I said, he's opening a conversation and he, he wants, if we obey what he's telling us to do or asking us to do, usually he'll give us further revelation, further instruction, confirmation that we're on the right path. If not, he might correct us and say, no, no, that's not exactly what but I'm telling you, I want you to do this instead. So, you know, dreams, like I said, the Lord is opening up a conversation and he'll give us confirmation through other people, through other prophetic people. Uh, you know, good example. Last night, um, a guy had a dream about um, tithing. He was talking to somebody about tithing, the, the concept of tithing in this dream. And this morning, one of my friends posted about tithing on Telegram, and people have been asking me for a long time to weigh in on the issue of tithing, my view on it, and I had not felt led by the Lord to do that until this morning. <laughs> a friend of mine posts this message on Telegram, and I'm like, you know what? That's a good message. I'm going to repost that in my channel. And that started a very long, very um, 
active, uh, heated at times conversation about tithing. But it came from this, well, when, when I posted on a subject, the guy's like, that's really funny that you talk about tithing because I had a dream last night. I've, and it's the only dream I've ever had about tithing. And I was talking to a friend about it. And, and I just felt like it was confirmation for him and me that this was time for me to talk about tithing. So he got confirmation. I got confirmation from his dream that this was a subject God wanted us to talk about. And Dave, I was excited that you include uh, a dictionary of dream symbols at the end of the book. Pro publishing tip, if you're going to write a dream book, you need some kind of a basic dictionary reference guide. You'll sell more copies if you include that in there. It's just kind of how it seems to work. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of how, how do you want people to use that uh, in terms of if they're trying to interpret a dream, do they take everything you have there at face value or is it just meant as a guide to move them in a direction? How, how would you like to see them put that to use? Yep, just a guide. So you have to start somewhere. Um, when, I, when I start people out on healing, I give them some simple uh, approaches to healing. Now, if you have a sprained ankle, just point at your ankle and command pain to leave and command the bones and ligaments to, to, to be healed. That's a starting point. That's not the only thing there is to healing. There's many, many dynamics to healing, but you have to start somewhere. So with dream interpretation, you have to start somewhere. And a place to start is um, like a dictionary, like I have in the back of this book, that gives you some ideas some suggestions about what these issues, what these topics, symbols, people, places, compass points, colors uh, might mean. Not the definitive, not what they always mean, what they might mean. Uh, so my dream dictionary in the back has over 700 common symbolic elements that appear in dreams. Um, if those subjects appear in the Bible, I've got scripture references for them. I give both positive and negative. Uh, interpretations of almost every uh, topic that's in that dictionary, because sometimes uh, a particular symbolic element will have a negative connotation, and sometimes it'll have a positive one. Even black sometimes has a positive uh, symbolic meaning. So there's both negative and positive, and you have to ask the Lord, okay, well, you know, a lot of times black or ravens, you know, symbolize evil, but not always. Sometimes it symbolize something positive. So you need to ask the Holy Spirit, which, uh, what are you symbolizing? Here's some ideas, to, you know, what specifically uh, are you saying in, in this particular dream? It also, the index includes uh, uh, interpretation of common names um, to the best of my ability. Um, some of the names are sort of ambiguous in their meaning, but where, where the meaning of a name is clear, I give, you know, the interpretation of names and that's uh, a found. Pe a lot of people find that to be pretty helpful. Uh, I have found it to be helpful. And Dave, in terms of the reader's journey with the book, they get to the the last pages before the dictionary. Maybe might be the place they stop reading. Um, how do you hope you've empowered them? How do you hope you've impacted them uh, through their journey with the book? Well, all my books are uh, training and equipping. Right. So my my uh, ministry is training and equipping the saints for the work of ministry. I hope that my books empower you and strengthen you and encourage you to develop a stronger relationship with God. Number one, that's my, my, my goal. I want you to understand that God is speaking to you through your dreams. You can learn to interpret your dreams. You'll, you'll be astounded at what God is actually telling you through your dreams. Even seemingly simple, foolish dreams can have very profound messages. And I would just encourage you to. Uh, believe that God is speaking to you through, to you through dreams, and that if you pursue an understanding of the dreams, He's going to give you more and more revelation about you, about your ministry, about your community, and about the world. And Dave, you have way more content than just books and resources on dream interpretation. In terms of people connecting with you, finding out about your resources, where are the best places we can discover you? Uh, best place to go is my website prayingmedic.com. And if you go to the landing page, prayingmedic.com, you'll see a whole bunch of portals on there, uh, portals for my podcast, for my articles, for my videos. I have a lot of uh, teaching videos on healing, uh, physical healing, seeing in the spirit, uh, deliverance, uh, traveling the spirit, uh, hearing God's voice. So I do you know, a lot of videos, quite a few articles, podcasts, 
books, MP3s. Uh, the, by the way, Dream Interpretation Made Simple, this book is now available on Audible. Uh, we just got that finished a couple weeks ago, and we're working on getting Traveling in the Spirit on Audible. Going to try to have all the books in the Made Simple series on Audible by the uh, in the next month or two. And like we do with every episode, we'll make it easy. We'll have links in the show notes. If you want to collect with, connect with Dave, check out his website. If you want to pick up your own copy of this book, we'll have it all linked up for you in the description. It, sadly, it is time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Dave Hayes, the praying medic. And once again, our book today was Dream Interpretation Made Simple. And Dave, I want to say thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's been an honor and a pleasure to have you back in the show. Thanks, Sean. Uh, always a pleasure talking to you. Look forward to our next conversation.